Oh, there we go. Got it. Here we are. Thank you. Remember to pay for it when you're finished. Welcome to AHA, A Human Among Humans, and <clears throat> feeling pretty relaxed. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of other people that took a relaxation, restorative yoga workshop, uh, resting poses <clears throat> in Inman Square at Heart and Soul. So, hopefully. <laughs> I will not be falling asleep, <laughs> but I think it's interesting enough that uh, that will not happen. See, most people are concerned <clears throat> that the audience will fall asleep. Uh huh. Michelle Ann is concerned whether she will mm -hmm. fall asleep because we mm -hmm. know that you are riveted to every word and gesture. Mm -hmm. and I'm thanking you in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fascinating. I learned about. <clears throat> which enabled a lot of relaxation to breathe <clears throat> and imagine the base of your throat. Uh, I mean, the, well, the base of your throat, but also the base of your tongue. And so it was breathing in, imagining the backside of the tongue and going out to the tip of your tongue while you're breathing in. And then, while breathing out, you're imagining from the tip of your tongue on the top side, going way down. So this is all while you're breathing out. It's very complicated. <laughs> I was, um, so while you're breathing out, you're imagining that you're going down and relaxing all the way down at the base of your tongue. Why? Uh-huh. And... <clears throat> yeah, and the, and to include relaxing the base of the throat. Mm. And all while this was going on, I wasn't exactly sure how it all fit together, but I think I was able to do it. While you're breathing in, so you're breathing in and you're going out to the base of your tongue, you're also imagining the waves coming in and soaking in the sand. And then as you're breathing out, you're going down your tongue and you're imagining breathing with the waves receding back out to the ocean. And then you breathe in, going out to the tip of your tongue and you're breathing in any nourishment that comes back in from that big ocean. And then again, you're breathing out, going down the top side of your tongue to the base of your tongue, and relaxing. This is counterintuitive. It, uh, it, it yes, it, yes, I think. Because breathing in, you you feel it first with the tip of your tongue, <clears throat> but you're doing it the other way around. I breathe in. Mm. You might think this is a show about breathing in yoga, but are you going to be surprised, or maybe we'll be surprised, mm -hmm. and it will be that show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. So I breathe in. And mm -hmm. ordinarily, I would think I'm breathing from the tip of my tongue, right? The air mm -hmm. first comes. So this is hard. I breathe in and feel the air first in the tip of my tongue. Uh -huh. But do I, do I imagine the tip of my tongue all the way to my throat? No. No. I imagine the other. Wow, see, that would be nice and relaxing, uh -huh. breathing in. If you just did the tip of your tongue? To, to back to my throat, yes. Uh-huh. And then breathing out well, from the inside? I mean, hopefully I didn't get it wrong, but I, when I was listening, it really seemed that, that it was going from the base of the tongue out to the tip when you breathed in. When you breathe in? Uh-huh. Check it out, because I, I, I uh -huh. do certainly like it the easier way. The easier way. Well, yes. I'll have to verify at Art and Soul and ask uh, which way. Did well, I like the other go. very much. Uh -huh. I like doing it wrong. Oh, you do? Well, yes. who knows? That might really be the right way, actually. That oh, is that nice and easy? Yes, For yes, whatever, yes. it was really wonderful. 
So stay, so. stay tuned to find out mm -hmm. how to do this. I would we'll, bet on we'll Michelle. We'll do our research. Yes. And, and we'll come back. Next week, yes. For you. Yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> since we only got to four poems of the 366 yes. poems last time. I'm glad she remembered. That's so nice that someone remembered. And you too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I would love to do this again and um, uh, to hear a little more. Um, maybe even you have some songs to some of the poems. So, um, and, and there's a lot of different, there's really a lot of different areas that you cover with your poetry. Um, I think last time we talked about um, almost the playfulness mixed in with the perf with the sacredness, so with clown profound, and um, yeah. So uh, one uh, there's a lot of um, relating to the body in in a lot of your poems. And um, I wonder if you would like to talk a little bit about that, um, how maybe that came about in your writing. Um, there's a lot of poetry that talks about actually what you see <coughs> in nature or um, Thinking of that, the lyrics to that song, Skylark, that Jean brought over, um, that was about a meadow. And, um, and what's interesting, for your poetry, it seems like a lot of it can, can help teach. And um, I, I, at least I find that, that it can actually personally uh, enhance my personal experience. Uh, so I, I wonder if you would like to share and talk a little bit about how that uh, relates for you and um, and what, how maybe this has, why that inspired you to write uh, the poems, how that came about, the inspiration um, to write poems in that way. Well, I have a movement teacher, movement dance teacher, Patrick Crowley. Mm -hmm. I've been working with him for over 10 years. And I'll have a book of our work together also called The Moment Soul Healing. S-O-L-E. And Patrick, when he would come over to my home, I would have an agenda for the hour. There would be, he'd be teaching me things I wanted to learn. And he would not let me speak. Sometimes there's trouble listening, so that was, I always thought that was an excuse, but it was wonderful anyway. Mm. He would not let me speak unless I was dancing. So I say, mm -hmm. okay, the agenda for today is, he says, floor. <laughs> and I would have to go on to the floor and be moving, in, which is very hard for me, moving while mm -hmm. <laughs> words would come or not. Somehow the effort to learn to dance and be in, go down from my head into my body, you understand this mm -hmm. more than most would mean that my head would be quiet. Mm. And there would be no, which is a wonderful thing for me. Mm. And eventually, hopefully before the hour was up, I would at least mm. get, be able to be moving and get my agenda of what I would like to accomplish for today. But he was right, more important than my agenda was learning mm. to move before thinking. So 
So I wouldn't just be a head. I would be um, a person with souls. Hmm. Hmm. Um, <coughs> well, it makes me think of the poem Way Ahead. Yes. <laughs> if we could find it. Way however. Ahead. We don't, ha we don't have an index. Uh, well, yeah. I have it written out. Oh, if, yeah. Oh, you do? Oh, but, good. Um, yes. Why don't, you read, why don't you read it for us? Okay. Then I, could, uh, then I might be able to read your writing and I could oh, read okay. it again. Oh, okay. All right. And way is, Did this is, most of the writing is for, for reading, I think. I didn't think of it in terms of speaking, but hmm. way is W-E-I-G-H. Um, way, to weigh my head, yes. Yeah. <laughs> way ahead. Yes. <laughs> and I was honored when... One Alexander teacher, I think, wanted to use this mm. poem for her classes. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's always a good thing for a poet to hear that somebody wants to practically use mm. our poem. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. All right. So this is way ahead. When our head balances on top of our spine, we get into our head and out of our mind, letting weight rebound through feet, seat, heart crown. We rise through sky while rooted in the ground. Hmm. So that, thank you, that was it. Hmm. Uh, when our heads balanced on top of our spine, oh. <laughs> we get into our head and out of our mind, oh. letting weight rebound through feet, seat, and crown. We rise through sky while rooted in ground. So that's that's yeah. really what Patrick taught me, really. He said, to get out of your mind, get into your head. Mm. And what, when you have that quality of experience, what does it mean to you? Like what, can you describe that experience when you get out of your head? Like the difference in being in your head than not? Well, my um, mother used to tell me, because I was a teacher, I'm a mm -hmm. teacher, those who can do, those who can't teach. Mm -hmm. So these poems, especially with you reminding me, remind me to do this. It's like, oh, I'd love to be able to do this. These are mm -hmm. hopes and prayers that mm -hmm. can at least a little come true now. Mm -hmm. So if I do it now, Will I speak or not? You speak so nicely and beautifully. Who cares if I speak? So if I, how does it go? Read it again. I'm going to do um, it. Way ahead. So I would have to weigh my way head. Ahead. When our head balances on top of our spine, we get into our head and out of our mind, letting weight rebound through feet, seat, heart, crown. We rise through the sky while rooted in the ground. Okay, I hope everybody did that. So they, I should have forgot to tell them I was doing it. Mm -hmm. So that maybe everyone could do that, yes? Mm -hmm. When our heads, everybody, mm -hmm. you, Maybe everybody yes. meaning you yes. and you yes and I can read it and I maybe <laughs> will do it while reading it and weighing our heads so when our heads balance so you feel the weight yeah we know you I feel mm. I Michelle Ann mm. when our heads balance we, oh, you were saying you feel the weight of your head do you, can you do that yeah you're weighing your head not you, you can, oh, are, can you, are I, you doing yes yeah they well, can do it very well hey, they're good at it us yes 